The Lord be with you. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. He left. He left. He was their savior, their master, their teacher, their friend. And he left them. They had enjoyed sweet fellowship with him. They had seen him minister and heal. They had listened to his teaching. And he left them. What did they do when he left them? What do we do when he leaves us? Over the years, I've met many Catholics, and in their lives and their experience, they feel like Jesus has left them. Perhaps they had enjoyed a time when they were younger of sweet fellowship, of deep faith, of great dedication, and yet now he seems to be gone. I've met young people. They got a spiritual high on some retreat. Ooh, it was all so exciting. They came home and told mom and dad that Jesus is awesome. But time goes on. Those young people bump into the real world with its real problems, real questions and doubts, and they feel like Jesus has left them. And it's not just the young ones, those who are older. The cares of this world, the doubts, the troubles with health and family and money. And they wonder, where is Jesus like he used to be? Back in the past. Why did Jesus leave them? Well, of course, we read the gospel and we read about the ascension, and we find that the disciples at that moment did not go back to their old ways, did not disband, did not despair. What did they do? They kept on praying. They kept on trusting in God. They kept on believing that the very promise that Jesus had given them as he rose up to heaven, the promise that he would send them power from on high, the gift of the Holy Spirit, they believed and they kept praying. They prayed for nine days between Ascension Thursday and Pentecost Sunday. And of course, our Lord never gave them a time he never said, it's going to be nine days, fellas, set your watches. They prayed for nine minutes. They prayed for nine hours. They prayed for nine days. I have met so many Catholics who once had a certain devotion and dedication to the Lord. 
Sometimes what I'll do is I'll meet some fired up person who works so very hard for their career, their job. And then I find out that once they had that same level of dedication to Christ and to the faith, but that has withered, that has faded, and now their job is everything to them. When people lose their dedication and devotion to Jesus Christ, they don't typically lose dedication completely. Instead, it shifts somewhere else, and something else takes the place of Jesus, who appears to have left them. But of course, we know, I hope we know, that Jesus Christ has not left us. That his very promise, amazingly, he says this, he says, it's better if I go. Why? Because I will give you my Holy Spirit to be with you and strengthen you in every way. He even goes on to say, after I've gone, after the Holy Spirit has been with you, you will do even greater things than when I was with you, greater things than me. One of the reasons why the Lord feels like he leaves us is because he loves us too much to let us simply linger in a kind of choosy consolation where we enjoy the benefits of Jesus, where we enjoy the sweets, the candy, the consolations that come. The Lord in his love will take those consolations away so that we will learn the difference between loving God and loving, loving God. Did you get that? Oh, when loving God feels good, when loving God tickles us, it's easy to love God. But he will take those consolations away. And then we face a different question. Will we love God and trust God and be dedicated to God even when we don't feel anything? That is the next step for some of us. And that is why so many Catholics get stuck at a certain level. They were trained, they were raised as children, rightly so as children, that Jesus loves them, he's going to be great, he's candy and nuts. But at a certain point, your faith better be deeper than candy and nuts. It better be a trust that even when he feels like he's gone from us, we know we know Jesus is with us always. And we must do what the disciples did in those moments, not race back to our old pagan pursuits, not simply take our dedication elsewhere, but to pray and pray and pray some more until the Lord fulfills every one of his promises. It might take nine days. It might take nine years. It might not be till we are with Jesus in heaven that all of his promises are fulfilled for health and every happiness. But that's okay. Because he has left us his Holy Spirit. He has given us his Holy Spirit, not just sprinkling him on us like fairy dust, but he has put his spirit in us so that we can truly say Jesus Christ is with us always in every dark valley, in every difficult circumstance. He has not left us. Yes, he will from time to time take away the consolations, take away the sweet feelings, but he does that so that we might go deeper, that we might grow stronger and live not for the mere emotion of religion, but with real faith. Jesus Christ has promised us his 
Holy Spirit. Do you believe it? Will you receive him today? Will you receive the grace and presence of the Holy Spirit? His Holy Spirit. Jesus' Holy Spirit. He offers it to you at this Mass. He offers his Holy Spirit to you.